Hey guys, it's your girl Dravisha and I am back with another video. So, I went online on my Instagram and my Facebook account and I polled the people that follow me. I asked them three different questions. One, if you could ask me any question, what would it be? Two, what are some assumptions, whether true or false, that you had about me when you first met me? And then three, which is what this video is about, I asked the people that followed me if they could ask my grandmother, granny as I affectionately call her and basically everybody else who meets her calls her, what would that question be? Y'all guess what? They asked my grandmother more questions than they asked me. And Loki, I think y'all are more excited for that video than anything else. One thing I wanna say is, first of all, thank you for uh, participating in that activity with me. It allowed me to really get to learn more about my grandmother. My granny and I talk on a day-to-day -day basis. She lives with me and we have grown together, right? But these questions, these lines of questions definitely, I don't know, it was just a really intimate experience. Like I said, I got to learn a lot more about her. Um, I definitely piggybacked off of some of the questions and asked a few more. But I'm hoping that you guys enjoy this. The whole goal of my Vlogtober series is for you guys to get to know me a little bit better. And by sharing this little piece of my heart, I hope you guys see that I really am trying to build that connection with you guys. Before we get into the video, if you guys haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. October isn't over, so we definitely have more videos coming. I'm recording videos each and every day of October. So without further ado, I'm going to share a special person in my life with you guys. Um, and I hope you guys learn something from these gems that she is spitting. See you guys on the other side. Bye. All right, so we're gonna start with the easy questions first. Um, I reached out to some of my friends and I asked them if they could ask you any questions, what would they be? Okay, you ready to answer some of these questions? Sure. Okay. So my first question for you is, how did you manage or how do you manage to keep such a great and happy spirit? I got the Lord on my side. All right. Because if it hadn't been for him, today I don't know where I would be. So it's my faith in God. Ever since I can remember every person you touch you leave a lasting impression on. What do you think? What you mean by touch? Every person you come into contact with, oh. you leave a lasting impression on them. They want to make sure that you stay around in their life. What do you think causes that or attracts people to you? One of the things, it depends on your personality as an individual and how your concept concept to people is. Mm -hmm. uh, haven't always been this way, but when I was in business, when I was young with this old lady in the restaurant, some things she used to say to me. Uh, one of them was, every person is due in the morning, a good morning. Mm -hmm. uh, then plus how you talk to people. Because everybody don't talk to you nice. Mm -hmm. don't mean you supposed to return that same spirit back to them. So I learned within those years of being in the restaurant and coming in contact with all kind of people, nationalities, uh, it helped me a lot with people. Because I haven't always been pleasant with people. Uh, at one time, I didn't like people. <laughs> so that's where I get that from. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I didn't like people. But being around her and 
she talking to me and teaching me gave me a better outlook on life. What is one thing that you have tried to instill in each one of your grandchildren? One characteristic. Hmm. I don't know no, no one. Okay, so what would it be? I always tried to teach them, do unto others as you would have them to do unto you. Whatever way you act toward people or your friends or your classmates, um, expect that to come back to you. So when you, as I was taught as a kid growing up in the church, you sow good seeds, you would receive goods in return. Bad seeds, you get nothing but bad in return. So I, I tried to teach my grandchildren the same thing. That it's up to you how you present yourself. And one thing's for sure. You can't go wrong when you do good. So the next question I have is, what would be some of your tips for aging gracefully? First of all, don't die. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's the first one. And start taking care of yourself when you're young. Because I try to teach, especially my girls that when they were young, how to take care of themselves, how to treat their own body, that by the time they get in their 20s and 30s, everything is a natural then because you've already taken care of yourself all through the, them young years to make sure that it stays there. Because I, I, I got started late and I think 16 is late. But it's not late. But that's when I started. Trying to take care of my skin. My body. 16. So, so what are some of the things that you do to make sure that you... you Don't give away my secret. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Can we give the people one? One or two? <laughs> Can we give the people one or two secrets? First thing, first thing I've never done. I've never put soap on my face. No kind of soap on my face. Cleanliness is next is next to godliness. That's from the Bible. So So you use face wash, is that what you use? Well, when I was growing up I couldn't afford the bathtub. Mm -hmm. So I had to use clear water. So when I got to where I could buy face scrubs and those, what you call them? Uh, see, I got to the age and I can't remember all this stuff. Buy all of this stuff for your skin. Then I bought it. But before then, it was just clear water. And see, I come out of the hills of South Kakilaki, where the water, pure spring water, and not like it is down here in Florida. The hard water. With all that chlorine and stuff mm -hmm. in it, you know. I, I didn't have that kind of water. So it was good. The next question would be, at what age do you feel that you truly fell in love with yourself as a person? And do you have any advice for creating boundaries with people? When I first fell in love with myself, 16. What was that defining moment? When I started taking care of myself. Mm -hmm. 
all of that became important. My hair. Well, maybe not 16. Might have been a little earlier. Yeah, about that time. 16. When you start taking, washing your own hair and making sure you condition it and all of that and your face and bathing regularly. So I'd say about 16. My boundaries. Mm -hmm. How do you create boundaries with people? Like this is how you're going to treat me. And well, what I won't accept. Sometimes I'm one of those ones I believe that that first impression is the best impression. You learn a lot about a person when you first meet them, when you talk. The words that come out of their mouth, uh, that they, the tone that they talk to you in, things like that. Uh, then you know whether you would like to be around them again, to have a conversation with them again, or if, hmm, stay away from that person. So that first impression is always the best impression. Okay, this one's a little bit deeper. Um, is it harder to live without a spouse or without a child? <laughs> 